Hello, hello, beautiful women. Ah, happy Earth Day, whatever that means. Um, we all have different ideas or it may not even exist in your world, but just naming it because well, generally I've heard a few people remark on it in the last 24 hours. Um, so I figure I wish you a happy Earth Day and putting aside all of the political and conglomerate opinions of what Earth Day means, I mean it from a place of deep wisdom, that deep communal wisdom that comes from us as, as beautiful women, empowered women, and the deepest relationship that we can have with, with our great mother, the mother that sustains us, gives us life that we have been birthed from. So from one womb to the great womb, I wish you a very happy Earth Day. And that is the perfect kind of intro into what today is going to hold because I've just been so enlivened by the series of Moon Lodge work, um, workshops and women's circles that I've been holding and opening up to the collective experience of the womb. And it's been profound. Um, so I thought I would open up the conversation today and start a little bit of dialogue about the womb. And I don't want to just reel off a whole lot of ideas of what I think the womb represents. I'll probably contribute a few of my ideas, but um, I'm really wanting to create some kind of experiential experience where you can s just slow down a little, tap into your womb and just check in of what's there for you and where are you in relationship with your womb. If we consider that we have relationships with our partners and we have relationships with our parents or our dogs and our cats, then what kind of relationship do you have with your womb? So it is a juicy conversation and I really acknowledge that it's meeting us all at very, very different places on our path because some of us may have been journeying with womb guidance and embodied womb connection for a really long time. Other of us, others may be completely new to it. Today's the first thing you're hearing. So, I mean, we're talking an expansive breadth of experience here. And so just to, to say straight up that what I'm offering here is an invitation that wherever you are on that spectrum of knowledge or experience, um, there may be something here for you because it's experiential. So it's a, an opportunity for you to really sense into what's there for you today, right now. That may change tomorrow or it may be different to the explorations you've done in the past. So it's my hope that this, in, this offering, this exploration could be something that meets you where you're at. And hopefully, I guess, the deeper intention for me is really feeling into our womb as this as a seated place of power for us in our lives when we really start to honor her and connect with her and get to know her for the breadth of um, wisdom that she really does offer us so before we get into it let's let's take a moment let's pause let's breathe let's do a little practice just just to connect in because to me so much of and this is big part of this disconnect and this divorce that we have with this powerful energy center in our body is come from us intellectualizing thinking about what does the womb mean what does it do how you know so so much of that journey home to the womb, journey back to this place of power in ourselves is about getting out of our head. And I feel like that's a great place to start. So I'd like to invite you wherever you are. And if you're joining in for the replay, um, I really invite you to press pause, create a little space for yourself now so that you can do some exploration. And I really would encourage you to have a journal if you can, something just to write down the odd thing that arises that you want to come back and revisit but do that now take a moment and just create the space you need to be able to pause and really drop into a practice um, and a deep attentive listening practice so preferably one where if you can allow an hour that would be awesome um, 
So go ahead and do that now and when you're ready, allow yourself to settle down into a seated position. Now we can totally do this exploration lying down, but I'm going to invite you now just to find a place that is seated where you are really attentive of your hips and their connection to the earth, where you can have somewhat of an erect spine, a sense of aliveness in the spine. You're not collapsing. And really acknowledging, if you want to imagine your pelvis as being a bowl, a chalice, if you would imagine that, a place of um, almost like a pool. So we're really sitting into this pool of wisdom that holds us at our most center point of our body. So starting to really feel into that connection that is happening between your body and the earth beneath you. And just giving yourself, we're using your breath, it's such an easy way to do it, just allowing the breath to flow in and then allowing a soft, gentle, audible exhale to invite a deepening, a settling, perhaps even a feeling of heaviness where you allow your body to sink a little heavier into that space beneath you. And then perhaps just noticing if touch feels good or comfortable for you today, maybe um, bringing a hand or both hands to your lower abdomen and just kind of cradling, holding your lower belly. And letting whatever sensations arise with that sense of touch, just let them arise and notice them as they come and as they go. Perhaps bringing awareness and allowing the breath to swell in your tummy. So really softening your tummy. Letting it expand into its fullness with your inhale. Letting it slowly collapse inward with your exhale. Really bringing awareness of the breath into this place beneath your hands, beneath the contact that you have with the warmth or the sensations of your hands. Breathing fully into this place and really allowing everything that is here with you right now to just be here in your awareness, in your presence. Whatever thoughts, whatever busyness of the day that's here, that is slowly, very slowly unraveling. Whatever tension there might be in the body, different places, holding. Whatever emotions might be there right now for you on the surface, just welcoming all of that experience into your awareness. And allowing that to just be okay. For, for now, it's all perfectly okay, just as it is. So really bringing full awareness now into the breath of the lower abdomen. And allowing that breath to start to really fill the forefront of your awareness. Notice how it potentially may be slowing down. Longer, deeper breaths coming with ease as your mind slows down a little. Really feeling into what is there in this space. Is there maybe tension or physical feelings, maybe some cramping or tightness, perhaps a little bit of bloating or swelling, perhaps a feeling of emptiness, of expansiveness, just noticing what's in this energetic space underneath your hand. 
just noticing it, not needing to judge it or criticize it or fix it even, just noticing what it, what is there. And noticing if it's totally okay if there's nothing there, if there's a disconnect, perhaps there's darkness or blackness or a void, that's okay too. Just really bringing the fullest of your awareness down into this pelvic bowl, into this quite literal bowl that you are sitting on. And just noticing whatever's there for you. This place in us is often very hmm, we may take our time, we may actually take longer than we have in just this little guided connection moment to actually fully sense what is happening here, what wisdom is there and take wisdom out of that actually, just sensation, what sensation is there? And for now, as I say, just breath can be a simple one that's easy to connect to. There's breath there, and then there's breath is empty, and then there's breath filling, and then there's breath emptying. And then along with that comes the sensation of the muscles moving as they expand and contract. Physical sensations are a good place to start when it comes to connecting into this womb space because they are something that we're used to feeling. We feel tightness. We feel when we're tucking our tummy in, sucking our tummy in and holding it. We feel that in our muscles of our abdomen. We feel that in our lower back. So just starting on that physical level, noticing what you're feeling, what sensations are there for you. Breathing into them, acknowledging them, just giving them full space to fill your awareness and then it's dissolve as you become aware of something else. And then noticing now as things really start to slow down and you start to find a deeper connection to this place in yourself, noticing what it feels like now to allow whatever sound is there to release on the next exhale. Ah. Just letting that sound rise up and move through you, letting it continue to soften you. You may want to continue making sounds with the exhale as you deepen that connection of dropping down, 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 deeper deeper into this beautiful bowl, this seated throne that you are sitting in. And it's from this place that I'd like to pose the question to you, just for you to sit and reflect on, to feel into, let the words of this question actually land in your womb space. Let them drop right down into your lower abdomen, feel the words. And really notice what sensations arise. Notice the sensations first and then give awareness to whatever stories might want to come in. Just feeling into that space and asking yourself, what does my womb do other than give birth? Notice initially whatever sensations might be there. There might be a tightening or a softening or a contraction. Just feel and then start to observe the stories or the words that want to come in. What does my womb do other than give birth? Just feel into that. You may like to jot down or make a note or two of some of the different things that you that come into your awareness. There may be nothing. You may be searching, oh, what does it do? Hmm, I don't know. That's okay too. You may like to share some of these little insights or questions or 
awarenesses as they come up in the comments. Just trust what's there for you right now. So, so often and what we're experiencing really here as a big part of our kind of rising feminine energy is really an awareness that we have disconnected and divorced ourselves from this place of power. And that's most of us, for most of us, that's not a conscious thing that we've chosen to do. It's a very unconscious programming that has been conditioned and not only by our societal environment now, the way that we have been educated and raised and taught to think and see ourselves, but this kind of conditioning spans lifetimes, lifetimes back. Ancestrally, for the women of our bloodlines, for all of those who we have been birthed through, all of the wombs that we have been birthed through, Imagine that your womb connects you to the womb of your mother. When you were in your mother's womb, you actually had already created the eggs that you're carrying in your body now that had the, have the potential to seed the next generation. So for every woman who births a, a girl into this world, we carry the seeds of two generations ahead. And whether you birth or not, you still have that direct connection to the lineage behind you, beyond going back into the past. A dear friend of mine is doing some beautiful research on this at the moment, and she shared that most women now have 100,000 women and wombs standing behind them, connecting back, all the way back through time. And as well as that, we have this connection to the past through our past lives. Through any other life that we have lived, either as a woman or a man, we will have known conditioning by or expectation of who a woman is, what she is, how she should behave, how she should show up in the world. All of this is what we carry in our wombs. So the past is, this, this womb is literally a portal to the past. It is quite literally a bloodline, a thread and a connection back through the past, all the way back, back to the very first woman on this earth. But our womb is also the deep centre, our, our primordial centre of gravity, this is the place that helps us to kind of keep ourselves oriented. The pelvic bowl helps us to stay grounded and connected to the earth. In this present moment, it is our gateway to being able to be centered. If we had the pelvis at the top of our head, we'd fall over. There's a reason for it being our center this organ, this, this energetic center is exactly where it's meant to be in order for us to be a conduit of this physical body rooting down into the earth and this spiritual body reaching up into the, the cosmos and sky above. So we have come to know through the conditioning of our culture, through our education, and our upbringing and our history, we have come to disconnect from this place of power in us. And for many of us, we know it as an organ. The womb is an organ and it creates the seeds of life. It carries a baby, it births the baby. But other than that, what purpose does it serve? So I've already begun to share some of the actual expansiveness of this particular energy center in our body, it quite literally is this portal of past, of present and of future. It's in this space that the, the, the linear time that we know, daytime, nighttime, sun, summer, winter, it's like 
We know that experience through our mind. Our womb knows timelessness. And it also within that timelessness knows the cyclic nature of all things. Our inner cycle, the cycle of our environment, of the great Mother Earth beneath us, of the changing seasons, of the moon and of the changing tides. So our womb is a deep weaver of the great web of life. And I love that image. I love this idea that if you imagine a spider when it weaves its web, all of these strands reaching out in all directions and it sits in the middle and it just waits to feel, to feel a small vibration on any one of those threads to recognize that there's something moving, something in the peripheral. That sense of a web and every one of those fine little threads spanning out into all directions, our relationships in this life, our past lives, our ancestors, the, the children of the future, all of these thre threads, they're just weaving out and we in our womb space have the capacity to listen like a fine antennae to the little bits of vibration that come in through those threads, weaving wisdom, weaving intuition, helping us to become more open to this timeless energy center that we are. So our womb is like an energetic portal. It's also an organ. And every month she bleeds and she sheds and she builds up what she needs to be able to create new life. And then if that doesn't help, she sheds. So on a physical level, we have this relationship to the womb and we know that. And then so many of us are disconnected from that. We take the pill, we have IUDs, we have implanons, we do everything in our power to try and avoid having cycles if we can. This is part of our culture. Um, if our cycles get in the way of how we live or what it is that we're trying to achieve in our life, the doctor can just prescribe us some, a pill to help manage that. So we are really living in a time and in a, in a place of, of conditioning where the physical, the physical insights and wisdom of the womb are not only being diminished and disconnected, but they're also so undervalued that we don't actually know what the purpose of our womb is. So we have this physical relationship that we either annoys us or it's disempowering or it's frustrating. And then for some, it's this relationship to birthing and creating life and having babies. So for some, that's the most empowering time of their lives when they are actually in communication and connection with the womb. And it can be life-changing. And for others, it can be traumatizing. So we have really polarized experiences of our womb on a physical level. And very, very little education to teach us otherwise. So we have this physical experience of this organ in our body. We have this energetic experience that we don't fully understand and we can't fully name but we know that there's something that makes our being able to move through time and space in different ways to just what we do as a physical body. We also have this immense amount of emotional expression as human beings and this idea that we suppress or we bottle up or we shove down emotions, well, where do we think those emotions go? If you imagine shoving an experience down, what's down? What's there? It's the womb space. So for every time we are avoiding dealing with a situation or we're confronted by an emotion that we really are scared of or uncomfortable or we don't want to deal with and we're not ready to deal with, it gets bottled up, suppressed down in this very deep, dark cave within us. So on an emotional level, our womb both conceals and reveals all that we have either been processing or not processing in this lifetime, in our past lives, in our ancestral lines. All of this starts to become bottled up, gathering a gathering place 
for shadow. Quite a perfect gathering place for shadow. This beautiful dark cave where there's no light ever ventures in there so quite easily we can tuck things away that we know we will never have to see again, especially with all the wonderful things that we can take to help us disconnect from the sensation, the physical sensations of our wombs. So we have this a physical, emotional, energetic relationship with our womb. One of the greatest forms of disconnection for us and our wombs in this day and age is our minds. We are conditioning and programming the mind to do all the thinking for us. It's the mind that knows and it's the mind that seeks to know. So while we invest all our energy in building our intellect, we become further and further disconnected from this place of wisdom within us. As I said, if you could imagine that all of our wisdom comes from our heads, our heads would become so big that we would fall over. This place of deep center, of primordial centering and connection to the earth, there's a reason why this is our greatest pool of wisdom, because it has the capacity to expand to infinity and still keep us centered and grounded. So our womb has all of these layers to it. And each and every one of us have got layers beyond layers beyond layers. I like to imagine that the womb itself in this, this spiral journey that we're on to journey into it, we literally start right around the outside of who we are and who we think we are. And we journey with all of that to slowly start to move inward to actually what's underneath that? What's underneath that? So sometimes this spiral journey that we're on when we do start to work with the womb, it takes us through same experiences time and time again, but another layer deeper and another layer deeper. They talk about that metaphor of an onion peeling back the layers. This is the womb. This is the, the story of the womb, her story, not his story, her story. The layers and the layers that have been put up to protect, to shield, to hide, to avoid, to suppress, to deny. So many layers. And it's not just our stuff, as I say. It's centuries of stuff. So embarking on this journey of getting to know our wombs is powerful. And this is why the sharing circles, the opportunity to dive deeper into inquiry in the space with other women is so powerful because what we hold here in this space is not just our own. It's part of the collective, the collective experience of the divine feminine. When we sit with other women and we share some of these stories that we've never spoken out loud and we, we talk about experiences that we would never give voice to, we start to see that there's a lot more energy in the collective. We're not on our own. And some of what we're carrying, it isn't our stuff. That's, that's part of what's in this great big pool that we are moving in energetically. So I share all of this just to help open up, open up perspective for the womb, for the purpose of the womb. And I'm, I move beyond, I'm wanting to expand perspective beyond this is an organ in the body. We're expanding beyond its physical purpose, beyond its emotional process and its storing capabilities, beyond the intellect and the mind and the game that happens between knowing and trusting and intuiting and reading and learning, you know. It's like there's this constant state of polarity happening in our beings and our womb is a place of deep integration it is the union it's a union point where the masculine and the feminine the opposings meet and unify so when we start to do this deep healing work we're actually opening up to more harmony in within and obviously when we have harmony in we have a harmony around us So all of this is staying on a lighter level because the reality is we could spend 
weeks, months, years, diving into the depths of our womb's wisdom. But for today, I'm opening up the perspective a little. And then from this place of center that we've connected into, so I want you to come back to your center, to your womb, to your story. Breathing into that space bringing the hands there, breathing into that space in your lower abdomen, really dropping down as much as you can, drop down, down, down into this bowl. And it's from this place that I want to invite you to really feel into what's yours? (laughs) Where are your stories? Where are your myths? Where are your limiting beliefs? And there's a really simple, easy way to start this conversation. So breathing in, it really helps to be as connected as you can to this space. (sighs) Getting out of the head because the mind is going to be quick to jump in and add its point of view and opinion. So breathing in, connecting, dropping down, 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 down into this bowl perhaps allowing a couple of gentle sighs, audible exhales again, letting that sound move up from the womb and out through you, bringing you back to center, letting go, letting go, sinking deeper, sinking deeper and heavier into your throne, into this place of seated power in you, really letting yourself sit into that place of power, to sit in and up. And I'm going to say a few words and I want to let let those words, if you can, let those words literally drop in as if I was handing you something to put in a bowl. Let the words drop down and into your womb space. And as they land in your womb space, just notice what you notice. It might be a sensation, a feeling in the physical body. It might be an emotion that arises. There could be a story or a thought or a memory. Just noticing what arises as each word just lands in that bowl. And you may want to have your pen and paper ready beside you if there's a particular word that has something that's charged in its energy or in its response. Just note it down. You may note the word, you may note the feeling, you may note whatever, just sometimes it's nice because some of these these words could be gateways into self-inquiry and deeper exploration. They could also be just the little bit of insight you need to start understanding what your womb is holding, the truth that is being both revealed and concealed in this beautiful power centre. So breathing deep, sighing gently if that feels right for you, feeling yourself rooted downward and heavily resting into the earth beneath you. Letting these words land. Power. Power. My power. Powerless. Truth. Truth. Receive. Help. Help. Open. Open. Numb. Black. Penetration. Mm. 
induced. Hurt. Pleasure. Passion. Passion. Indecision. Uncertainty. Clarity. Surgery. Forceps. Sacred. Bleeding. Cycles. Change. Birth. Acceptance. Shame. Trust. Holding. Contraction. Contracted. Intuition. Hidden. Scared. Shadows. Orgasm. Orgasmic. Bliss. Dissolve. Pain. Unfulfilled. Lacking. Curious. Intimacy. Love. Create. Creation. Creativity. Surrender. Yielding. Surrender. 
softening. Letting go. Letting the echo of whatever words were significant to you. Letting the echo of those words ripple through you. Awaken insight. Letting those words be a source of awareness that inspires a deeper healing conversation with your womb. You may like to when We've finished this process and you've had a chance to just sit with some of these words, some of the energies and feelings, thoughts that have arisen. You may like to come back and share a few of them, whatever the little gems are that you may have touched on, to share them in the comments. As I say, our collective pool is something that we are very, very sensitive to. And sometimes we may not fully understand why we're responding to that energy. And then someone else names it and you think, ah, oh, that's, that's there. That's, that's something I'm holding. Or that's something that's ready to be moved or let go. That's something in me. Or perhaps that was something that was in me but has moved on now. Our words are a gift for each other as we do these explorations. So I really invite you to come back and share whatever arises for you through this quiet practice. And it's from this place of connection, this place of deep listening, that I open up to a handful of the beautiful rituals that I do to help deepen these conversations. So we've started with this really simple connection exercise using our breath to drop down, drop down out of the head, down, down, down into this beautiful big bowl at our centre. The bowl that is both full and empty all at the same time. And it's from this point that we can start to play around with um, a visualization of breathing energy up into the womb and down and out from the womb. So it's taking our awareness instead of focusing on the breath coming in through the mouth and down into the belly. We're now imagining breath drawing up into the womb and then releasing down and out through the yoni. So using the yoni as this entry point, breath coming in, filling the womb with energy and exhaling, releasing that breath down and out through the yoni. So breathing in this way really shifts. We start to take energy in and release energy out in a very different conscious way. Playing with this breath in through the yoni, drawing up and releasing down, perhaps with the exhale if that feels right. And this simple breathing exercise is one that we can in encourage or emphasize by drawing in the pelvic floor muscles. So drawing the pelvic floor muscles in and up as we breathe in and releasing down and out as we breathe out. Activating the pelvic floor muscles is basically like when you need to wee and you need to 
trying to stop yourself from going to the toilet. So that when you try to imagine yourself stopping yourself from weeing, that sensation is what's activating the pelvic floor muscles. So clenching the pelvic floor muscles, drawing them up and in on the inhale. And then softening the muscles, releasing down, 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 down. So that's a really simple expansion on the practice we've just been doing. We connect to the womb space either through touch, through breath, or just by simply really allowing ourselves to ground down, allow ourselves to become heavier and more held by gravity. And then we open up to this breath practice of drawing in and drawing out the breath up through the yoni into the womb and then down and out into the earth. So playing with those little rituals. And then we can go a little bit deeper again, if we like, by starting to introduce some sound. Toning with the womb, the womb. Ah, oh, in these beautiful dark places has its own frequency and resonance. So giving space for sound to move from the womb up and through you is a way of shifting dense energy. It's a way of expressing something that needs to be expressed in order for it to be released. It's a beautiful way of expressing without trying to name it or analyze it or think about it, just breathing. So the perfect place to start with this exercise is just as you breathe in, breathe out and let a sound rise from the womb. Oh. So playing with the exhale of the breath and that being the audible sound of the womb. We're not just sighing now, we're what does the sound of the womb make as you exhale? And it may be deep and groany, it may be primal, that sound you've never heard yourself make before. Be curious, be explorative. This toning exercise really is one that can help to move energy. And so allow yourself to be a little outside of your normal comfort zone when it comes to sounds. And fully trust whatever sound is coming through you. You don't need to hold it back or shape it or dim it or quieten it. Just really give it space. On that exhale, whatever sound is moving, letting that rise up, pushing up and through. <sighs> so playing with that sound on the exhale and then bringing awareness into what sound does your womb make as you inhale? Just noticing. <sighs> what sound is there on the inhale that rises from your womb? So giving that a bit of space, having a play with that. So these are all deepening practices that allow you to go deeper and deeper into conversation with your womb space. Some of them may be comfortable, some of them may be really on edge and uncomfortable. Some of them may be completely impossible if you are new to making connection. They may feel really challenging because you're not getting anywhere. But just fully trust where you are and trust whichever of these practices and rituals support you in connecting and starting some kind of conversation with your womb space. So one of the other beautiful things that I love to do is um, allowing the warmth of the sun to greet the womb. And it's a beautiful, simple practice, lying down somewhere where there's sun coming in. Um, if you can, ideally, being able to take your underwear off, just bring the soles of the feet together, allow the knees to spread wide and let the sun touch down on this very sensitive, delicate part of our physical body. That connection, the sun in itself, is a source of energizing and um, renewing, purifying energy. 
it has the capacity to help us shift things, but in the most subtlest of ways. So if there's an opportunity for you to take this practice deeper, to lie down in front of the windows where there's sun beaming in, or to take it to the next level, which is that next deepening of ritual practice, and take it outside into nature. Allow yourself to womb embrace with the earth. And that may simply be lying down on the earth, feeling and really visualizing the connection of your womb and the energy center of the earth connecting, exchanging energies, inhaling and breathing together. It may be that you just take yourself down into a quite a primitive squat. This is something we used to do all of the time. We've created toilets which take us away from this connection of squatting down to release down into the earth. So it may or may not be appropriate, but finding somewhere if you can in nature where you can play around with the different relationships of your gravity center, your womb space and the earth beneath. And if possible, I mean, this to me is the ultimate experience. Get naked. Get naked and be outdoors. We don't allow ourselves, we don't give ourselves permission to do this sort of thing enough anymore. And more than than most of the people I know have some kind of shame around and embarrassment around body and being naked and Just even the sensation of feeling the wind on their skin is something that's foreign and uncomfortable for them. So I really honour where we are all at on our path. But there is something deeply rejuvenating and just an opening of acceptance that happens when we allow ourselves to be naked in the presence of nature. No other humans around. No other eyes to pry. Just the feeling senses of the earth, responding, moving, dancing, playing with us, and an amazing opening of our sensory experience, our sense of taste, touch, all of the feelings that we get on our our body, our skin is our greatest, biggest organ in our body. We don't think of it as an organ. We think of organs as being tucked away inside. But our our skin is the largest organ we have on our body. And when we allow it to be exposed to the elements, we awaken all of this sensory information. We really, it's a beautiful way of really starting to learn to listen to body wisdom. So if that's something that you can do, Start with all of these beautiful practices, go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. And then if you can, take your layers off and go out into nature from this place of womb connection. What do you feel? What do you sense? What do you notice when you are in nature being held and supported by the earth from this place of vulnerability, of opening, of receptivity. So play around with that as a possibility. If you are willing and brave, I'm, I'm commending you on, on it in advance because it's something that I really feel has been life-changing for me in my relationship with my womb and my body, a much deeper level of self-acceptance and appreciation for this divine vessel that I occupy. So other than that, there are a couple of other beautiful things we can do. We can take our beautiful breathing, toning, even yoni bathing rituals and deepen them again with touch. We can take our hands to our lower abdomen and we can just intuitively use our palms and our hands and our fingertips, maybe even our knuckles, Um, to just gently move on the surface of our abdomen and trust that you know just how you need to be touched. Trust yourself. Play with this idea of tending to the body. You may find that it is a point that loves to have a little bit more pressure and somewhere else that likes to have a gentle 
caress just soft on the surface, but play with the, the sensation of touch, of massage, even getting a balm and an oil and rubbing that all over your belly and playing, touching, rolling, poking. Just this is such a beautiful way of intuiting what does my womb want right now and how can I care for her? How can I respond? And so sometimes to go deeper in this conversation, I'll take one of those words where I was getting a reaction from the womb space and I'll whisper that word and then I'll feel what my womb feels and then I'll apply some kind of touch and see, oh, how does that feel? So sometimes touch can be used in another way of release, but it can also be used as a way of soothing. So if there's something there where there's an energetic or an emotional charge, we can use our gentle touch, our gentle holding to soothe ourselves. And so the last one that is really a big part of my um, initial journey that I took with womb connection, and it's one that I still do every now and then, but not as often, is opening up to um, moon time rituals. So our moon time, if you are still bleeding and menstruating, is a powerful, powerful time where our womb is communicating with us. And there are all kinds of rituals that you can do using your own blood and, and that which is being released from your womb. Um, simple things, um, there's, there's, there's expansive out there things that you may go, whoa, I've never thought of that and I will never do that. And then there's some more really simple things. Um, all of them involve needing to be able to capture your blood. So using a moon cup, a lunar cup, um, something where you can capture the blood and then simple the simplest way is to capture the blood you may like to add a little bit of water to it and take it out and, and put it out in the garden pour it over some of the plants that need a little bit more sustenance um, you may even do that with indoor plants you don't necessarily have to have a garden to do this in but pouring the blood, giving the blood back to the earth, this idea of honouring this life force that moves through you, giving thanks for your ability to create, giving thanks for this renewing energy that allows you to shed that which you're not needing and to renew and revivify that every month having these cycles. So giving back as a ritual of giving back to the earth. It could also be a ritual of actual release, where there's a, a purging that you allow yourself to have with the earth. So um, pouring your blood into the ocean or into a lake or burying it, digging a hole and pouring your blood into the earth and then burying it. There's so many ways that you can explore nature and earth conversation with your own blood. And then you could go so far as to be doing more intuitive um, art and creative processes using your blood. Now that tends to be on the outer extreme. So usually this is ideal for people that have been playing around with womb rituals for a while, built up a little more confidence. But everything from invoking clarity and, in, and psychic insight by taking the blood and putting some on your third eye or intuiting um, messages and symbols from the womb, either directly on your skin, on your belly, perhaps welcoming whatever symbols the womb is, is seeing and acknowledging and welcoming them by drawing them on your tummy and then noticing them, seeing them, observing them, or doing the same on a piece of paper, taking your blood and just letting whatever symbols, imagery wants to come through, come through. I would definitely say it's, don't aim to create some kind of masterpiece on a piece of paper because after a day or two the blood does really start to smell not so nice. So it's not the sort of thing you're going to go and put up on the fridge but it's a ritual process of intuition and messaging. Our womb communicates with us a lot of the time not on an intellectual level. So it's not having this conversation where it says, Jade, go and do this. It may be bringing you 
imagery it may be off, it may be presenting symbols to you in your outer environment or your internal senses of pain or cramp or all of these different sensations we experience physically are another conversation it may be um, changes in heat and temperature and energy levels rising and dropping. So, I mean, there's a lot of physical ways that our womb communicates with us, but also opening to the insight of our dreams when we're, when we're sleeping at night time. That's another really powerful way for our womb to share her wisdom with us. So there is an immense amount of energy moving, insight and awareness moving in this energy center and the more we start to quiet the busyness of our minds and drop down into it the more we start to intuitively notice the different symbols and signs she's giving us it's it's quite a i'd like to ima imagine it this way imagine this being a conversation you have with a horse or a penguin or a cat Think of any animal that you feel a longing to want to connect with. That connection and conversation is very similar to the type of conversation you will have with your womb. There may not be an intellectual understanding. This is what that the, this is what the horse is saying, and that's what I'm saying. But on a deep energetic level, there is a deeper understanding and a deeper knowing. So opening up to this conversation um, with a willingness and a curiosity to explore the many different languages of your womb space. So that's all for this conversation for now. As I say, it is an absolute drop in the ocean of um, womb talk and it is something that I not only have journeyed with a lot in my life, but I'm continuing to deepen and deepen the more we work in circle with women because it, the deeper I go on this journey, the more I realize that the womb is a centerpiece to a lot of what we are journeying with when it comes to indecision and lacking trust and um, meeting the sense of inadequacy, the pusher in us that wants to keep pushing to get it done, meeting the perfectionist that wants to get it right every time. Our womb is the center point for all of this conditioning and shame and hurt and pain and shadow, but it's also the center of our pleasure and our joy and quite full body ec ecstatic experiences. So while we're disconnected from it, we're disconnected for that whole spectrum and for so many women moving through life at the moment we are definitely surviving but the question is are we thriving and thriving means being able to experience the fullness of our body's expressions the fullness of our body's emotional capabilities the highs and the lows both of them are powerful human experiences that's why we're here and human bodies is to have these rich, emotional, live sensations in our body. And all of the work I've been doing keeps bringing me back down to this energy center. And I have to say, it's whether you have a womb or not, this energy center still exists. So if you've had a hysterectomy or some kind of surgical procedure where the womb's not there as an organ, energetically this energy center still is very much in a place of power and if you've stopped your menstruating and you're in your crone days you are still very much connected to the power in fact you are up there for being in the greater seat of power when it comes to being in the presence of womb wisdom so no matter where we are on our journey and in our relationship with the womb there is immense wisdom, learning, insight, beauty, human experience that helps us to really start to experience the richness of life the more we start to come back and listen and listen and listen. So that's my invitation and this is the seed. This is the very starting point for us in this virtual circle to open up to conversation about the womb, to dive deeper and deeper into the layers of the womb and the conditioning and all that's being held, the truth that is revealed and concealed in this space. 
the next step for us in this conversation for those that are willing is to be venturing into the online workshop that I'm holding on the 2nd of May, Ancestral Wounds and Wisdom. This is very much coming from this place of womb center and looking at some of the, the deeper places that we are potentially self-sabotaging um, due to the conditioning of our past, due to the ways we've been told to think about ourselves um, in this life, past lives and ancestral lives. Whatever those experiences are that have denied and suppressed us, really looking at them and giving some space for healing to happen so that we can start to really step into our place of power in this life. So that's the next step from this conversation. And I welcome you if you feel the call to either send me a little message or respond in the comments um, to make sure you get in and uh, book a place. They will be limited seats so that everybody's getting a really intimate experience and a chance to share. So I really hope some of you come along and join me on this next little step. And other than that, my invitation now is for you to really feel into feel into your womb space. What is next? What do I need right now? You may need more time to journal. You may need some movement. You may just feel, trust, go there. Um, give yourself some space to really honor and deepen this conversation um, in whatever way feels most nourishing to you. All right, beautiful women, I really invite you, if you have a moment, to share your thoughts, share your experiences, insights, even if it's just words that are popping up for you, um, put them in the comments and help us to, as a, as a group and collective group, um, feel into the pool of wisdom that is in all of us. Blessings. Thank you, beautiful women who are here with me live, and thank you to those who have come along and joined us again for the replay. Um, I really hope this has been a inspiring and heartfelt conversation. All right, blessings, dear ones.